Hi, my name is Will Terry, and I want to fix this artwork by Jenna, and I want to focus on concept, drawing, and composition. So let's get started. This is from Jenna Benton Lasley, and I'm so happy that she's allowed me to use this piece. She's actually the illustrator coordinator for the Alaska chapter of the SCBWI, and uh, I'm going to be um, teaching in that for that group um, Saturday. And um, but she she allowed me to use uh, her piece. Um, her critique for that, um, that I did for her for this presentation. So thank you, Jenna. And she's just got this really fun, um, uh, idea of, you know, the, 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 uh, the woman that lived in the shoe kind of a thing, only going with the badger idea. And, um, so I just want to go through this and give like my suggestions to make this stronger and, and, in keeping with a lot of the, the, um, things that you talked about, Lee in composition. And if you guys have anything that you want to chime in on, just keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the first thing was crop. I think uh, sometimes we, we get things a little too close to the edge. So I would, I would move out um, the, the picture plane a little bit and allow more space around the edges. And uh, so that's the first thing. Another thing that I would do is I would say, um, um, and, and this kind of goes with, with the concept as well. So composition and concept really go uh, together, as Lee was pointing out in his um, lecture. And, and that is that, you know, we're telling the story here. We're saying this is a family that lives in, a, in an old shoe or an old boot. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've gone to the lengths of, of cutting a doorway and cutting a, a wind, a, like a decorative window above, and they've got this, they went out and they got this really fancy door, and mm -hmm. then they just stopped right there. And I, I think if they were <laughs> willing to go to that length, that they would go further and add even more uh, elements of, of a home mm -hmm. in there. And, and, and I've, I've loosely drawn these in. I'm just, just making suggestions here. Um, but you could, you could, uh, take this in all kinds of different realms. You could, uh, it could be the, the, the house, you know, the, the embellishments could be found objects from the wood woods. So it could be, you know, a turtle shell, a, a, you know, a discarded turtle shell could be mm -hmm. the roof. Um, it, it could be, um, you know, sticks to frame the windows and things like that, uh, and the doorway, but whatever you pick, it has to match. So. Um, my roof definitely wouldn't match. You'd have to find something a little more formal, like you've already kind of gone with there. But I think if you're playing up um, an idea like this, you got to you got to exhaust it. And it, one of the things that I do is I'll try to go too far so that I can pull back. But uh, try not. It's I think it's actually better to take something a little too far than not far enough. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the the next thing. And then the next thing after that would be perspective the perspective on the door is a little bit off so if you if you find the horizon line can you know if you guys are watching right now I'll just add a layer in here but where where would you say the horizon is Basically. oh right at her like eye line yeah it's yeah. probably right in right in here somewhere mm -hmm. this is my mouse drawing right here um so yeah so if that's the case then the top of the door is going to have to go down to that horizon line, right? Mm. So I kind of just drew that in uh, uh, loosely here and kind of redrew that a little bit. So, um, and then the, the, that would also make us looking up at the boot so that the ellipse um, at the top, we wouldn't be looking at it flat, the top of the boot. We would have to see from underneath, which would actually make that hole for your leg into an ellipse basically mm -hmm. um and uh so yeah so a, a little bit of perspective problems on this one and then um the next thing is gesture and um mm -hmm. in looking at this i'm looking at the main character and i'll just zoom in a little bit more so you can see here but the main character is is pretty static it's pretty straight up and down and uh, this is this, we're always telling stories, right? So that that's everything that we're doing um, with with svslearn.com and with our children's book pro classes. 
we're trying to teach um, artists how to tell really, really good visual stories. And everything that you put in your, your painting should matter or you shouldn't put it in. So it needs to have a purpose for going in there or you, you edit it out and don't put it in there at all. So we've got this, this mom who's frazzled because she's got all these kids. She lives in a shoe. Um, and as the nursery rhyme goes, right. And, uh, she's even got one crying on her shoulder, you know, that, that she's, uh, you know, probably got in a backpack Mm -hmm. or something like that. And, but she, she, I think she could look a lot more frazzled if, if you had, how many kids does she have? She's got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight kids that I see. If you have eight kids and you're a mom, you're frazzled. So we need to make her, um, uh, make the kid more frazzled. So that's only half the amount of kids Jake has. (laughs) So, so, so I want to see, you know, and and this is I did this really quick. I I could push this a lot further too, but you know where she's hunched over a little bit more, you know, frazzle Just out her hair have more. Some body language, right? Like yeah, some body language. Um, put you know what do we do if you type in in Google Images if you said um, mother frazzled and I did this for her for her video critique. You know, mother frazzled. Almost Watch every language. single image. Yeah. What's that? Watch your language there. Just be careful. <laughs> Every image is of a mom got that's got her hands, either two hands up or one hand up. And the reason is when when we get stressed, all of a sudden our heads starts to hurt or we, our blood starts to boil. And we, we're just like, I don't know. It's like soothing. It's self-soothing, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're, when you're trying to uh, tell us a visual story like this, you need to act it out and really get into character because you're, you know, you're, you're really the director of your, your image. Right. And a director on a movie set would say, would give you your motivation would say, okay, so you're a mom, you're frazzled, your kids are screaming. It's loud. It's noisy. There's all this stuff going on and action go. And then you get, you know, you act it out, but you have to do that for your illustrations as well. Okay. So that's yeah, the next method thing. illustration, right? Yeah, method. It's, method it's illustration. true. It's true. Yeah, you need to be authentic. You've got to you've got to act it out. So the next thing is a, a kind of a pitfall that a lot of illustrators fall into um, when we work digitally is because we we um, can zoom in to work on a little character. Sometimes we zoom in too much, and mm-hmm. we're able to draw them, but then when we zoom out. They're a little too small. So the next one is just basically a scale um, mm-hmm. problem where I would I would make those characters much bigger in the piece because at that size they just they're just too small to see, and that tells me that you're you're probably just zooming in a little too much, and it's okay to zoom in, but just make sure that you zoom out and and look at the spaces and and ask yourself it, you know even compare your illustration to other illustrations that have let's say nine characters in them, you know, find another illustration that has, you know, five or 10 characters in it and say, how big are their characters? You know, and if yours are, are really too small, then, you know, that's kind of a sign there. Um, the next thing is I want to look at this little character right here. And can we, you know, this character is jumping rope. Can we make uh, their rope jumping a little more um, believable, a little more accurate. And I got this piece of, reference here you know of a guy jumping rope now his legs are together um i drew this little character where the legs are are separated and and then she's got her legs kind of feet kind of touching which is making this kind of little window in here i i think it's easier if you have space going around your your limbs for the most part um and, and a little more interesting character. And I also think it's more interesting if you're jumping rope to have the rope above the head rather than on the below position. So like if you look, if you took a sequence of people jumping rope and you said, what's the most interesting position you'd get, you know, the rope sideways, like cutting across their body, you'd get it down below like where it looks like it's, it's overlapping their feet when it's not going to hit their feet, but it looks like it is. And then you have the position you have here where it's clearly below, and then you have clearly above. Then I just picked above because I think it looks better. Yeah. 
Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about on this piece is what you're saying, you know, all the different stories that you're, that you're telling. And right now to me, you're, and, and specifically with the kids, you're telling two stories. You're telling um, jump rope, jumping rope and hanging. So like all the characters are hanging there, you know, this one's hanging, this mm -hmm. one's hanging, this one's hanging. This one's kind of like stuck in there. Um, and, and these aren't, but, 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 but these aren't really telling a specific story. They're just sort of there. And I think you should tell really specific stories. You're, you're the author of this image. So you get to write all kinds of stories. And when I make an illustration um, that has lots of different characters doing different things that are adding flavor, I come up with specific things that I'm going to have them doing. So you could have one. These are just ideas that came up with off the top of my head. Uh, putting graffiti, you know, like what is going to frazzle out mom? That's really what you're coming up with. You're asking yourself, what can the kids do that would drive mom to be frazzled and just mm -hmm. drive her crazy? So you got one slingshotting, another one jumping off of the house with an umbrella, tying sister up, playing in the mud, you know, hanging from a clothesline um, and, and, and dangling the other clothes down in the mud or something, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can do. But you don't want to have all the characters basically or a lot of characters doing the same thing, which is just hanging. So you have one character that's doing something very specific, like jump roping. And I would come up with other activities like that. So that's my critique. And thanks again to Jenna for letting us use her piece. Yeah, that's awesome. So now, Will, show, really cool. show me, show me your version of it. You did a full painting, didn't you? <laughs> You should actually. I would love to see your take on this no, fairy tale. Will, Te Will Terry would knock this one out of the park. I can fun. already, I can already picture it in my head. Yeah, this would mm -hmm. be fun. Did you see the Scott Gustafson's um, woman who lived in the shoe? I didn't. Know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna pull, pull it, up? it up. Yeah, I just had it. Um, this is a guy. This is the fairy tale master, right? Um, and he. Oh man, he just every time gets it just right. This you're an artist, right? So your job is to get the ball over the touch, you know, get a touchdown, right? Get the mm -hmm. ball over that that yard line, that last yard line. And I feel like some of these drawings we see, it's barely making it, you know, 20 yards or five yards. <laughs> you're like, well, and we all more. we all start. I mean, like everybody has a certain number of hours they've been doing this. Mm -hmm. and i when i first started i didn't even know how to start an illustration you know on my own without yeah. looking at at somebody else's uh creation you know so that's really fun um but you see you look at it i mean even the shoe itself is an interesting shoe so had he stopped at just that shoe it's already different from any other shoe illustration you've seen mm -hmm. but then he adds the roof and the roof is like curving over so and it's like dilapidated and falling apart so even the roof is special different from other roofs right and then you have the kids like you said will like they're all doing something different they're mm -hmm. ones dangling but you got a kid playing trumpet you know like that <laughs> they're right there right over that, that alone hand. is going to drive you crazy <laughs> and then look at the body language of uh -huh. mother hubbard or whatever her name is um, well, and the, and the kids are like spilling out of the house. There's so many of yeah. them. And then, and then of course there's, there's stuff all over the yard, right? And she's got chores, leftovers that haven't been finished. Then to top it all off, it's raining, right? <laughs> Just yeah. that nice touch little... right at the end. <laughs> so she went outside so, to get some peace and quiet and it's raining. So my advice too with this is if you are doing a classic illustration like the old woman who lived in the shoe and your thought is well i'm going to do animals instead that's great but you've got to at least look and see where the bar is and see what you could do to either reach that bar or just take it above it you know right now sarah asked a question what would what would i do on this um this other the illustration of the um the badgers to put foreground in there and that would be a great opportunity to use one of those kids in the foreground 
I mean, there's a, any one of them doing an activity that is a no, that is naughty would be perfect in the foreground. Maybe they're aiming the slingshot right at the camera, yeah. right at the viewer. But not right every here, illustration know. needs a foreground element. That's just one true. one way to do it. Like the, yeah. I mean, the one I just showed you, it was a spot illo, um, and and it works just fine for that. You know. Um, well, I, t- so- I told you guys, um, you know, I like to label all these different kind of compositional things. And what Will was talking about just a second ago with, with one kid in the foreground, it's what I call the Mary Grand Prix principle of composition. <laughs> if you guys want to remember it, because she's who I first noticed it, where if you have a scene that is really complicated, like a, the old woman who lives in a shoe, you have to draw a bunch of stuff, right? Anytime I think, oh my gosh, I have to draw a bunch of stuff. Something is going big in the foreground. So you put one kid really big in the foreground mm-hmm. and that takes out 10 kids you have to draw in the That's midground. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And makes it more interesting. Yep. For even more great tips, check out svslearn.com where we teach all the classes you need to become a professional illustrator.